Here's, here's something to think about. Identity. Identity politics, because that's what we're up to our neck in. Okay, are you who you are? Can I box you in? Will you accept that as an identity? So I could do that lots of ways. You're male, you're Asian, you're young, right? There's things about you that I can derive because of your putative membership in a set of different groups. The problem with doing that is that the number of groups that I can assign you to is without end. So I have to pick arbitrary groups to assign you to, and you can accept that if you want. But there's no evidence that those are the proper canonical groups. But maybe you're happy about that, because now you've been assigned membership in a group, and that's your identity. Okay, so the question is, well, fine. What happens when that identity is blown into pieces? Then what? Well, here's, here's the answer to some degree. And this is the answer that's embedded in the story of Noah. If you want to withstand chaos, do you want to be who you are, or do you want to be the thing that changes who you are constantly? That's the question. And that's the difference. That's the difference. There's a categorical difference in identity. Are you who you are, or are you the thing that could continually be more than you are? And that's the thing that isn't the stable identity. It's not the initial state, it's also not the state of being in chaos, that nihilistic state, let's say. And it's not even the state of reformulation that occurs after you've gone through the process. It's the state of continually going through the process, so you can identify with the thing that trans... You can identify, identify with the thing that you are, or you can identify with the thing that transforms who you are. Right. And that's the same as the state subjugating itself to the individual. Because the individual is the thing that transforms the state. And what the state should do, the state's necessary, because obviously it organizes all of us into peaceful cooperation and competition. The state's necessary. Then the question is, is the state the highest good? And the answer to that is, well, it can't be, because it's old and dead and blind. And so if the state becomes the highest good, then you're occupied by the spirit of something that's old and dead and blind. Well, that's not only not good for you, because then you're old and dead and blind, but it's also bad for the state, because as soon as the state gets old and dead and blind, God gets unhappy with it, and the chaos comes in and washes it away. So it seems like a bad solution. So what's the proper solution? You subordinate your group identity to the identity that transforms your identity, right? And the state subordinates its power to the vision and articulation of the individual, because that's what revives the state. And so that's what these stories are trying to stumble towards, roughly speaking. So, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Well, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Now, you remember, in the Adam and Eve story, Adam was walking with God to begin with, but then he got all self-conscious and hid behind a bush, and when God came to walk with him, he blamed his wife. For, for his insufficiencies, which I still think that's such an unbelievably comic story. I just can't believe it. It's so absolutely ridiculous. But that's exactly what happened. Well, you have Noah here, and Noah Noah's like a counter, another counterpart to some degree to Cain. Noah's a just man, and he walks with God. And so he's oriented properly. And because he's oriented properly, when the flood comes, not only does he manage to get through it as an individual, he manages to get through it with his family, and he saves, and, well, he saves, he roughly saves the world. That's how the story puts it forward. I mean, it's an ark, and it's full of animals, and, you know, it's, it's got a child story element to it. In fact, I suspect it probably was a story that was primarily told to children. You know, it's like a fable. But it's a fable with punch, like the Pinocchio story is a fable with punch. It's like, well, yeah, there's going to be a flood. There's always a flood. There's always a flood. So who are you if you want to get through the flood? Well, then you're Noah. You're the thing that builds the boat. You're the thing that acts justly. You're the thing that walks with God. We already know what that means. You identify with the transcendent. That's like Geppetto pointing to the star before the transformation process that occurs with Pinocchio. It's you're identifying with the benevolent spirit of the state. So you have a relationship with the transcendent and the benevolent spirit of the state. And you're also identified with the capacity to generate chaos out of order and the reverse. That's what it means to walk with God, roughly speaking. It's across all of those dimensions.